love boy, Tonio. He's crippled with the polio. I promise I'll bring him this toy. You let me take it to him, huh? You didn't join up, Angelo. I know. Want to change your mind? No. <laughs> That's enough. twenties, the gun roaring twenties, that is. The man with the shortest life expectancy was the man who knew too much for the comfort or safety of some gang. And death was such a terrific speech impediment. Our only chance of smashing the mobs and the rackets was to find victims of some gang's violence who could still talk and weren't afraid to. I hadn't found that kind yet. I'm Barney um, Roditsky, Gangster Squad, uh, Police Department, City of New York. Is that You're not the doctor. I've never seen you before. Why do you come here? Uh, my name is Barney Roditsky, Police Department. Well, you're going to catch the bad man or hurt my papa. Well, we're sure going to try some. That's why I'm here, to talk to you, papa. But what can you do about it? They beat people, they kill people, and all the while they laugh at the police because the police can do nothing to them. That's because nobody will talk, Mrs. Angelo. Because if you don't talk, you've got a chance that you stay alive. But if you talk, you die. Or oh, worse than that, it's somebody you love that they kill. Please, leave him alone. Leave us alone, please. I'm sorry, Mrs. Angelo. I have to talk to him. That's my job. I have to. Mr. Angelo? My name's Ruditsky, Police Department, City of New York. I know. I hear you talk with my wife, Teresa, outside. Oh. Well, I, uh, I stopped by to see you last night after we got the patrolman's report who found you, sent for the ambulance, you know, but uh, you were in another world then. You're lucky, Mr. Angelo. Lucky? Yeah, we didn't know whether you were going to make it back or not. We found out who you were from your chauffeur's license to drive your truck. The rest was easy to figure out. So we know why you got it. But unless you tell us who gave it to you, you backed us up all the way, why, we get nowhere. How about it? I don't know nothing. Well, I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Angelo. This is just a little formality we have to go through every time one of our good citizens gets his brain scrambled or his ribs kicked in because he wouldn't pay off some hoodlum for the right to earn an honest living for his family. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty. It's a great song, isn't it, Mr. Angelo? But it'll go out of style before your kid grows out of knee pants for all that his old man cares and other people like you. Because you're the ones that have to care, believe me, all the way. Wait. Yeah? It's not for me, I'm afraid. It's for my little boy, Tony. Crippled with the polio. My wife with a bad heart. I know, Angelo, but... If it was just me, I'd tell you everything. I don't care. I love my country, Mr. Rodesky. And I want it to stay like the songs say. But I love my wife and my boy. I don't want nobody to hurt them. I don't want them to kill me, either. Because if they kill me, who's going to take care of them, huh? 
You understand, Mr. Dudesky? You see, huh? Yeah, Angelo, I see. Yeah, I see it everywhere I turn. They're like... I get so sick inside, they want to take a Tommy gun and blast the guts out of the lousy two-bit pup. Sorry, Angelo, to barge in on you like this. Didn't know you had company. My kind, you mean, huh? Matter of fact, we're glad you're right here on the job. And we hope you find out who did this terrible thing to Joe Angelo here. We'd even like to help if we can. <laughs> did you see the crazy young punks that mugged you, Joe? No, I don't see them. Anyway, the president of the association, Mr. Nick Sarecki, was sorry to hear what happened to you. And it makes no difference that you're not a member yet. He's got the welfare of all the truckers at heart. And he appointed me as personal representative to bring you these lovely flowers as a token of his best wishes, and you should get well fast. They're very pretty. Well, take it easy, Joe. And if you need anything, just get word to us. And we'll be hoping to welcome you as a new member soon. No. I make a decision. I get out of the trucking business altogether. I save a little money. I sell my truck and buy a little candy store in Brooklyn I've been keeping an eye on. That way I don't have to work so hard. And I'd be with my wife and my boy all the time because we live in the same place with the shop. It's better for them too. Because maybe if I get sick and die, they got a little business to look after them. This way what they got. A truck. You think my decision made good sense, Mr. Dudeski? Yes, I do, Angelo. I think it makes very good sense. You and Bugs think so too, Mandy? Mr. Sarecki will be sorry to hear he's losing a new member, Joe. But maybe you'll figure that a man has to do what he thinks best for himself and his family. Yep. Good luck. And don't forget all your old pals in the trucking business. They'll never forget you, Joe. So long, pal. Wait a minute. Wear this back to Sarecki. And you tell him for me, he better buy a big bunch of those for himself if anybody ever lays a hand on Joe Angelo again. <laughs> and you also tell him for me that if Mrs. Angelo and the kids suddenly inherit that candy store, I'm going to make somebody burn. And I hope it's him. Do you hear me good? You don't need to treat me like a punk. I'm not a punk. I'm right up next to the big man. You want a punk? There's a punk. Not me. Beat it, punks! Joe Angelo bought his candy shop, all right, across the East River in Brooklyn. But back across the river in Manhattan, things had gone suddenly not so good for the mobs. This is not good. The governor means business. And this Dewey is honest and, and smart. If he gets started, he won't stop. And he'll throw every punch in the books. But we don't... When I'm talking, you listen, Mindy. Sure, boss, sure. But we don't touch him. We don't touch anybody who works for him, understand? And the association, we close down for now. Lay off. 
But just the same, this Dewey will try to hang a lot of raps on us. So we don't make it easy for him. No witnesses. Boss. Yeah? That's my department. Shall I get started? I'll tell you when. Now listen. I say no witnesses, but that don't mean we got to hit anybody. All I got to do is take a vacation till the heat's off. We pay all expenses, even while they live out of town. Treat them good, they stay friendly. Mendy. These parties got to go away. They can make bad trouble. Eight of them. Sure, boss, sure. It's as good as done already. <laughs> Why are you come to see me? I got a nice surprise for you, Joe. You and the missus, kid. You're gonna have a wonderful vacation. Tony, you go in the back room, huh? Nice boy you got. Vacation? Sure. California? Mexico? Florida? You'd rather go someplace else, that's okay, too. And it's all for free. Won't cost you a nickel. How about that, Joe? You're a lucky man, huh? Why you tell me this? I don't can go nowhere. Cut it out, Joe. It's all over the newspapers, the radio. You know why you got to take a vacation. Sure. I read the paper. I hear what go on. But that's got nothing to do with Joe Angelo no more. I sell my truck. I get out. I buy this place. I am... Now you listen to me, Joe. I'm top man on the big man's team because I always get the job done. Right now, the job is eight people got to take a vacation. Just like that, seven I got looking out of choo-choo windows already. Number eight and last, that's you, Joe. So don't louse up my record. You leave tonight, huh, Joe? No, oh, please. I can't go no place. I'm telling you, Joe. Oh, please. Listen to me, huh? My wife. She's very sick with a bad heart in the hospital. A doctor. He says she's got to stay there for five weeks for the rest. Oh, please, you tell, you tell your boss, huh? Joe Angelo, he keep his mouth shut. Nobody make him talk. I'll let you know. Big man ain't gonna like it. You didn't get Angelo to leave town. You got a pretty big man right next to you, Bugs. I figure it's time certain parties here in town got wise to it. Angelo, I'll handle that squid. Let's go. I told you I'd let you know, Joe. Outside your papa's room. You remember, Tony?
Barney. Yeah. I'll take him over to the rectory and have a doctor for him. Tomorrow, he should be able to remember whatever he saw here and to tell you. Yeah, the killer wouldn't have shot Angelo in the boy's presence and let the boy live to testify, no? I'm pretty sure I know who did it, Father, but I may need the boy's help later on, one way or another. That's him. That's the man who tried to make my papa go away, Mr. Rudzitsky. But last night, Tony, now, is this the same man you saw run out of the store and drive away? I don't know if it was him. I didn't see his face. Everything happened so quick. And I wasn't paying any attention to, to anything much but my papa. Sure, Tony. Sure, I understand. You're a brave boy, and you're going to keep on being a brave boy for your mother's sake, aren't you? All right, now, Tony. Oh, morning. Yeah? They're all outside. Oh, good. Hold them there a minute, will you, Max? I'll call you. Tony, if you help me now, we're going to play a little game. Maybe we can catch the man who did it. You with me? Good boy. In a minute, we're going to line up some men in here. One of them will be this man. Now, you never saw him before, but when I ask you to point to the man you saw run out of the store last night, you point to him anyway, you understand? Charlie, sometimes we have to accuse the wrong man in order to find out who the really guilty man is. It's all right, son. The police are always your friends. They'd never ask you to do something that's wrong. Okay, Mr. Rudzitsky. Thanks, Tony. Now, you sure you'll, you'll recognize this man when you see him again from this picture? Sure I would. Good boy. All right, will you, uh, Father, will you and Tony wait in the next room there, and then, Max, you can bring him in. All right. There. All right, bring him in. I don't know what's the gag, Ruditsky, but if I get bored, I leave. I'll try to keep you amused, Sorecki. Over that. How long are we here? I got a date with a horse at Belmont. What's the matter with girls? <laughs> Come on, Bucks, move. Line up over there, shoulder to shoulder. Take off your hats. Turn around. Okay, Max. All right. About face. This is Tony Angelo. His father, Joseph, was murdered last night in a candy store. Tony was in the back room when the shots were fired. He wheeled himself out front in time to see the killer run into his car and drive away. Put your hats on. Tony, if you see that man standing here now, point to him. Come on, don't be afraid, son. him. The kid's lying. What is this? I never saw his old man in my life. This is some kind of frame. 
Well, if you dumb cops think I'm sticking around for you to hang it on me, you're nuts. Crummy cop. Shut up, you. Get in. Keep your eye on the rest of these punks. Father, take the boy outside. Let's go. What do you guys call a mouthpiece? Get in there. Take off your hat. I sent word to you once, Sarecki, that if anything ever happened to Angelo, I'd make somebody burn for it, and I hoped it would be you. It looks like I got my wish. You're nuts. You're dead. Some punk crazy kid tries to stick up Angelo. He pulls a panic and hits him and runs. But do you go after him? No, it's Nick Sarecki you gotta hate on. So you rig up a frame. You heard the boy out there. The boy. You got him trained to point like a bird dog. What does a kid see when his old man is shot? He's too scared. He put the finger on Santa Claus or he told him he shot his old man. You better let me out of here and get yourself a real pigeon for that. Where do you say you were about nine o'clock last night? I can prove where. Ah, oh, by crumbs like you? Not crumbs, friends of mine. That's what I said. You better hear the buck on you, Sir Recky, so maybe you can cop a plea. Or do you want to keep her in frame till they throw the switch, huh? You ran seven witnesses out of town, out of Tom Dewey's reach. We know who and where. And then Mandy and Bugs got Angelo's yesterday. Try to get him to run. How do we know that? Because the boys saw them. Overheard everything, even fingered Mandy for me in the mug book a little while ago. He sees good, Sorecki. But Angelo won't run. And you can't afford to let Dewey get to him. You gotta play it safe, so what do you do? Hire a gun? No, they've been known to squeal. That's right. You gotta play it safe. So you gun them down yourself. But when that boy gets on the stand and he tells about how his father was beaten up, and then how he was shot down in cold blood, and he points his finger at you, Nick, and he says you're the man he saw run out of the store that night after the shooting. You think there's a chance any jury in the world won't believe him? No. No, they'll be with him all the way with his little twisted legs and his mother may be dying in the hospital. And they'll say that you've got to burn, Sarecki. Burn. Burn. And you will burn. All right, all right, I hear you. But I don't burn. I don't burn for anybody else. What do you mean? Take me back in there. I told you, don't anybody get hit. You come tell me Angelo don't want to go, we handle him some other way. But you got to be a big shot. You got to make a name for yourself with a trigger. Oh, you lousy pup. Take it. You would have got it anyway. He broke the rules. Send somebody to his apartment. He's dumb. He didn't even get rid of the gun. I checked. In a coffee can in the kitchen. I can go now? No! You don't go. I burn, you burn. Sure, I hit Angelo. Sarecki's orders. I'll swear to it. Why, you lousy... Hold it up. All right, come on. Get into that chat, buddy. Take me down, Mike. There. I'll keep your eye on the rest of these punks. Mendy Hymer kept his word, and he and Nick Sarecki were both electrocuted for the murder of Joe Angelo, who died because he wouldn't pay hoodlums for the right to earn a living.